So my name is Thomas Lacao, and I'm working at the National Physical Laboratory in Teddington. Uh, I was talking today about uh, hydrogen quality for fuel cell electrical vehicle and how SIFT uh, MS was used in terms of improving our measurement capability. So our topic is hydrogen quality. So currently in Europe there is a development of this type of fuel for a vehicle but on releasing absolutely uh, no uh, greenhouse gas. Uh, therefore, it's quite important to deliver the right quality for hydrogen. And in terms of decreasing the cost of analysis, we uh, implement SIFTMS technology and developed this for ammonia, formic acid and formaldehyde. And currently at NPL, when we are doing the measurement for ammonia, formic acid and formaldehyde, we need to use uh, three instruments and we need to calibrate them. Uh, this is quite a long process and it takes them like easily four days just for these three compounds. Uh, when we developed uh, SIFT MS, we were able to perform uh, the calibration for these three compounds uh, within half a day and we were able to run the samples in the other half a day. So we are easily saving a few days just by using the SIFT MS. And at the same time, we improve our limit of detections and we're much more um, accurate in our measurement. Uh, this type of event where you meet all the user is quite interesting because we can share experience. At the same time, we can share the different difficulty and how people overcome it. We may find a solution uh, or an idea for a new project and we will not have to start from scratch. We will already benefit from experience from the other user. So first I would like to thank Sana Tune and Sif for inviting me to present what we have done so far with the SIFT MS. Uh, just as a quick introduction, uh, I'm from the National Physical Laboratory. I hope everyone knows who we are. We are the National Metrology Institute of the UK. We are based in Teddington and we exist for already 100 years. And our objective is to develop the best standard and perform the most accurate measurement to support uh, the industry and the technology. Uh, in our group, we are a gas and particulate metrology group. Our main work is to produce uh, primary reference material. So I don't know if you have in your lab, probably some of our gas cylinders. Uh, we do it uh, primarily by uh, gravimetric preparation and we work on different type of matrices and different type of uh, compounds. In our group, which is energy, we work on hydrogen, uh, biomethane, natural gas quality, hydrogen enriched natural gas, sulfur, odorant, and all of this, and we prepare gas standard. As we are preparing the gas standard, we need to ensure uh, what is inside, and we do it uh, mainly by uh, measurement using gas chromatography and spectroscopy. And to do all of this measurement, we have different accreditation, like for testing and for preparation. So, we started like 100 years ago and we only made like a lot of gas cylinders. But at some point, you will see that we investigate hydrogen quality. Uh, why we started to enter in this business, and um, I will just go a bit on the background. Uh, this is the number of hydrogen refueling station that you will find worldwide. So in green, you will see the refueling station in America, in Europe and in Asia. Uh, Currently, we have a strong push to use this fuel for vehicles. And for example, in Europe, no, you have more than 200 refueling stations with a lot more projects coming every year. Uh, you will see that in Japan, they have more than 150 refueling stations already available. You can refill your vehicle. So there is an infrastructure that starts to appear. And at the same time, you see that the strategy for hydrogen into transport, so it's something from Toyota, you will start to see that there is a space for the battery electrical vehicle. So small vehicle, short distance. Then you have the hybrid vehicle that start to be on the longer distance. And then you see everything fuel cell electrical vehicle that are perfect for buses or heavy duty vehicle like trucks. So we start to see where hydrogen is going to be a fuel and where it will have its position. And we start to have infrastructure that is around. So then what comes important is the quality of this fuel. And there is three main reasons for this. So we are in an emerging market and there is a strong push to decrease the cost and improve the quality. How we can decrease the cost of hydrogen? First, we have to understand how it is produced and optimize it. 
And we can only optimize this if we understand what will affect the quality of the fuel. If you look at the end user, so the company that has a fuel cell vehicle, what they want is a car working for more than 5,000 hours or even more. And we know that the quality of the fuel has a direct impact on the lifetime of the vehicle. So if we don't have a fuel with the right quality, basically we will have cars that may drive for only 1,000 hours, which is definitely not what we want in a business model. Le last, now we have a legal requirement to show that the hydrogen is compliant with a standard when it's uh, provided as a fuel. And you will see that there is several standards. One is the ISO 14687, which is uh, the international standard. You will have an SAE, which is mainly for North America. And now we have a European standard, 17124. They are more or less all agreeing, but we have to measure, and now it's becoming a legal requirement in Europe, 13 uh, different gas contaminants in hydrogen. So here is the list. What is important to notice is uh, in this list of contaminants, first, uh, there is a large variety from helium to total sulfur. So you have to, to stretch your capability into various uh, compounds that are completely different. Uh, you can go to ion and fraction, 300 ppm. Total sulfur is only 4 ppb. So you will need to use completely different technique. And you have some uh, compounds that are really reactive and at extremely low amount fraction. So ammonia at 0.2 uh, ppm is extremely low, extremely complicated to measure. Uh, this is something that is not required to measure. And I mean, everywhere in Europe, labs need to perform this. And we are pushed to perform it at a lower cost than what it is actually. Um, this is more or less analytical challenge when you do this. And you will see that there is the sampling is a part of it. But today, I will mainly talk about the analytical part. Um, what is important to, to notice is that this is what we are doing at NPL. So to perform the measurement of these 13 gaseous contaminants, we need almost 10 different instruments. So if we use 10 different instruments that we have to calibrate, you can imagine that we have a really high cost and a high OPEX linked to this. And if we look to our current performance, this is what we are capable of doing. Most of our measurement for what we call permanent gases is completely acceptable. We are uh, performing well in terms of detection limit. When you look to formaldehyde, formic acid and ammonia, you will see that we start to be close to uh, what is the threshold of the standard. And then we, we need there to improve. And at the same time, just for these three contaminants, we probably, it represents 30% of our cost because we need to use four different instruments and we need to calibrate them and it takes a lot of time. So what we try to do uh, in the past few months is to try to see if the SIFTMS was capable of performing better than our current instrument. Um, the work has been performed uh, for ammonia with CSIRO because uh, in Australia there is a really large interest into using ammonia as a way to carry hydrogen to export energy. So they have a really large interest into seeing if SIFT is capable to measure ammonia in hydrogen lower than uh, 100 ppb. And uh, after we develop, or we had a look at formaldehyde and formic acid. Uh, but first of all, I will just would like to present like what we try to, to develop. So it's a way we are um, injecting a sample or calibrating a sample into our sift. So we use uh, pressurized cylinders, so it's high pressure. Uh, to do our calibration, we use uh, two MFC that are here. Two, yeah. ah, I can maybe point it. So you have the two MFC here, and then we have a, a vent just to avoid to send too much gas to the instrument. Uh, then the sift MS is like taking what it needs. And then we add uh, an overflow to get uh, the remaining amount of gas out of the system. That allows that we have absolutely no pressure in the line where the sift is pumping the sample. And you can see here that we implement a uh, swage lock, which is a sulfur net. So here you see that there is a needle valve with a sulfur net connection directly to the nozzle of the sift. And basically, we were not really knowing um, how much flow we need to set on the overflow, because normally the sift MS is always taking uh, the same amount of gas. 
So we did a, a really simple study. We set this flow here at 110 mL per minute or at 640 mL per minute, just to see. We know that at 640 mL per minute, we condition our system in just a few minutes. So when we work at 110 minutes, it will take more time, like probably five to 10 minutes. But at the same time, we see that the response of the instrument was different. So we see that basically, depending on the uh, flow on the van path, which in theory for us was not affecting, we see that uh, our calibration curve was different with a 10 to 20 percent difference. So we just realized that setting here the flow for our calibration curve and for our samples was critical to ensure that we get an accurate measurement. Uh, then we were interested to work on formaldehyde. Formaldehyde gas standards are not that easy to find, so we wanted to know if we can use a formaldehyde in nitrogen gas standard. And just to check this, we take formaldehyde in nitrogen and we compare it to formaldehyde in hydrogen directly on the SIFT-MS. We had both standards. Luckily, we, we produce standards, so that's easy. And we just measure them directly, so we did a direct comparison. We end up with a value for this standard what, that was half of what we expect. So then we realize that there is probably uh, a difference in terms of the gas matrix or in the way we are injecting the sample that create a difference. So then we decide that for all our work with hydrogen, we will calibrate only with a gas standard that are in hydrogen matrix. Uh, then we start to do a calibration curve. So you will see here three different calibration curves. So it's ammonia in hydrogen starting from 20 ppb to, 2000 to 2 ppm. You see that they are nicely linear, so that's a really great news for us. The working range was, I mean, we estimate 20 to 2 uh, ppm. So that's perfectly what we needed for ammonia and hydrogen, where the threshold is 100 ppb. And the only thing that we notice, and that still we need to understand, is we had a strong variation in between uh, the calibration curve, coefficient response. And this is something that we, we are not sure what happened, because we had a lot of fine tuning in the instrument in between all of this um, repetition. But what is really interesting is um, we had a, a reference sample that we, um, we assign a value by FTIR, which is our reference method. And all the time, our reference samples uh, was coming within 10% of the assigned value in all different uh, measurements we did with the SIFT-MS. So what we ensure is that uh, ammonia in hydrogen provide us, uh, was accurate by SIFT-MS. We have a limit of detection that is below 20 nanomole per mole, which is perfect for what we need to do in uh, hydrogen. Quick response, so it takes 10 to 20 minutes to get a result because we need to condition the system. You have to consider that uh, we are trying to measure really low amount of ammonia, so we need to get all the pipe until the, the inlet of the sift coated, if there is. So we estimate that it takes 10 to 20 minutes, and we only use uh, 3 liters of gas. Previously, we were using 20 liters of gas. So, uh, so far, I mean, we are quite happy to use this method, and already we save gas, and we get a way better uh, limit of detections. When uh, we looked at formaldehyde, uh, we did more or less the same. So we had our standard in hydrogen, we diluted, make a nice calibration curve that was linear. Again, we see some differences in between the day, so still something to investigate for us. Our working range was 20 to 1000 uh, ppb. So again, we cover uh, the threshold, which is 200 ppb. For, uh, for mild in hydrogen, our limit of detection estimated is between 6 to 12 nanomoles per mole, depending on, on the day. And again, uh, we were quite happy with it, but we need to understand why there is these variations. Uh, what we still uh, can't ensure is like, uh, the trueness of the measurement, because currently there is no uh, quality control material available for that low amount of formaldehyde in hydrogen. So we are currently trying to develop uh, quality control material, but from measurements we have done on real samples, we, we see some agreement with FTIR. Main problem is to have a sample with formaldehyde in hydrogen, which is something that we barely see 
in, uh, in the field. Uh, looking at uh, formic acid, again, same procedure, we use our gas standard, check if it was linear, so we get a working range 40 to 1000 nanomol per mole, which is perfectly compliant uh, with our requirement from the ISO standard, which is 200 uh, nanomol per mole. Here we get a limit of detection from 1 to 20 nanomol per mole, depending on which uh, experiments we look at. And again, we get this difference um, in the calibration curve. Again, we did some tests with some real samples. We are close to have an agreement with the FTIR methods. The problem is our FTIR method is not as sensitive as this instrument. So we just know that they more or less agree our FTIR is saying that there is less than uh, 100 uh, nanomole per mole, and this instrument is finding like 60 nanomole per mole. So we're still not sure who is right, who is wrong, but at least they tend to agree. Uh, just to summarize uh, what we have done, we have worked a lot on the inlet system. So how to validate, uh, we validate more or less the different parameters that introduce some variance in our system. We more or less set the way we are injecting the sample into our system S and we are able to perform measurements. So we already did um, a campaign of analysis on 10 different hydrogen samples from refueling stations. Uh, we tested ammonia, formic acid and formaldehyde. They have a linear response and it's really quick compared to what we had in the past. Uh, we get a good agreement with our uh, reference standards, uh, which is our in-house standard at NPL, which is assigned by FTIR. And we still do all the time external calibrations. Uh, in terms of achievements so far, when we look at our uh, hydrogen quality laboratory, I can say that we save cost and lead time because instead of using three instruments, we are using one. And SIFT is using, like I would say, a third of the time of what we used before. So I would say that right now we save 30% of our costs and probably we save at least uh, four days in terms of lead time, which is, not, which is quite significant. Uh, for such a short study. Uh, in the perspective and where what we are looking to do in the, in the future, we will look to develop H2S in hydrogen, which is another compound which is uh, quite important for this industry, and it has to be measured lower than 4 nanomol per mole. We already uh, see it, so we know that SIFT is able to measure it. We haven't done the, the calibration and limit of detection to ensure how good it will be. And at the same time, we are developing uh, quality control reference material because we see that for formic acid and for formaldehyde, it's not available and it's a side project. Uh, well that will be interesting because in our quality control reference material, we will put all the different contaminants, all the 13 contaminants, and then we will be able to see if there is any interferences uh, in the SIFT MS. In terms of new application, uh, there is two uh, different area where we look at. I, we will try to use the SIFT MS to identify new contaminants. So that will be a bit more tricky because uh, it's more difficult to identify new contaminants when they are not in the library. But we will try to do this. The second application, and it's what uh, we really uh, use the SIFT MS at NPL, is to use it uh, with our fuel cell um, department to investigate the impact of contaminant on the fuel cell system. And uh, here, I mentioned carbon 13 CO oxidation. Uh, when you have a fuel cell system, it's poisoned. The catalyst is poisoned by CO. But uh, as the system has a crossover, so you have air on one side, hydrogen on the other side, you have a crossover from the CO2 of the air side that goes into the hydrogen side. So if you look at the end of your system, you will always see a lot of CO2. So it's really difficult to see a small oxidation of CO. We are talking about uh, 0.2 ppm of CO, and the crossover is roughly 200 ppm of CO2. So what we are looking at is to use carbon-13 CO to see the oxidation directly and detect carbon-13 CO2. And uh, here is one of our first achievements. So you will see here the performance of a stack. So you see that there is a decrease in performance is due to the exposure of the stack to carbon-13 CO. At the same time, we are measuring on the outlet of the system the concentration of carbon-13 CO2. We see an increase, which is correlating with a decrease of performance. 
And here we see the carbon-13 CO2 and the carbon-12 CO2 that doesn't move. So it was, for example, this is the first time that uh, someone was able to directly measure uh, the effect of CO on this uh, fuel cell system, and it's uh, using a sift -MS. Uh, Just as a final thing, uh, at MPL, we are quite involved into the hydrogen industry. We even have, we host a hydrogen refueling station, and we have our own uh, car, hydrogen car, which is part of our carpool. So when we visit people, we can come and show that uh, hydrogen car is a reality. And um, thanks for your question, uh, for your <laughs> listening to me. And if you have any questions, feel free.